they have to pass the message on to their uh, to their con congruence, you know, to the, to their congregation, and uh, let them know that uh, the disconnect for the young African American people in the in the inner cities that this is a serious problem that they when they see the high rise buildings, the skyscrapers in downtown, and they see the wealth. They don't see themselves in the future of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, he focused on education and all the things he was doing. I, I think he's really a sincere man. Man, I, uh, I noticed that uh, almost from the very beginning. Because usually when uh, a person speaks out, uh, you, as soon as you speak with some conviction or, or strong, uh, have a strong opinion about something, you're going to have a thousand people that want to crush you and, yeah. and, and put you down. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's the struggle of, of all human beings, is who has the courage to stand up for what's right. And I saw him as a man that was sincere and was standing up for what's right. And the closer I got to him and, and uh, got to actually listen to him and hear him, uh, I saw that's what he was about. He's about really helping, uh, doing, using the power of his office to change the circumstance of us as a people in the inner cities. And his message sounded so much like what Imam Muhammad had been telling us, and the message that the Nation of Islam, through um, Elijah Muhammad, had given us, is to take responsibility and ownership for your own circumstances. And you have to not just take those responsibilities because mama said do it, or the, the policeman said do it, or your boss said do it. You have to feel ownership. You have to take ownership and see yourself in the future all the way to the top, to the highest level. And, uh, and I'm not sure if that uh, the clergy if everybody in that room got it, but I know it was enough of us that got it to understand that uh, there, we've gone through decades and decades of people preaching to us and uh, with uh, a mixed message, hypocrisy, preaching all of the, giving all of the signs, rehearsing all of the beautiful signs in the Quran and in the Bible about uh, how to come about establishing dig human dignity and peace in the life of a human being. But then, as African American people, we negate that by when we ain't, when the spotlight ain't on us no more. We saying, "Yeah, but you know that ain't for us," and, you know, and uh, and that that's what uh, that's what the hypocrisy that we see and that the young people see. They say, "Yeah, you can't." My parents, uh, especially my father, I never seen, I never saw an inkling of any weakness of him turning away from a conviction he made. If he made a conviction, uh, he stuck bad. I don't care if he said, you thought he forgot he said it. It could have been 20, 30 years ago. You bring it back up, he's going to have that same focus and that same conviction. We have to value, like the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, think five times before you, you go and spew something out your mouth that's going to affect the environment that you're in and change opinions. And Don't be so confident all the time. And we, now just think, we some of the most confident, most convicted people that say with the greatest confidence as if we know something, as if we done studied. Oh, good, well, we ain't studying nothing, but we just run, running our mouth. And just think, and then when people discover that you're an ignorant fool, you're a hip, you're, you're a, uh, uh, what do you call it, you're a fraud. You're a complete fraud. Ain't nothing to come out your mouth worth two cents. And then, so, so what does that make us when we listen to that fool and follow him, that make us a double dummy. So we got we got a lot, and we know we know better because we know for it. I, uh, there's, there's quite a few soldiers here from the nation of Islam. I mean, not from the nation, from the old soldiers from uh, that come up in the ranks of the nation of Islam, but stay with uh, with Imam Wahidin Muhammad, and they were telling me about how they didn't take. No mess. They, you right. can bring no negativity right. in there, right? right. You could come right. sticking up right. the air that they was breathing. Right. They cut your hair off. Right. 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 So, right. 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 so what happened? What's wrong? What the truth ain't the truth no more. We can't defend what's right. And we can't stand up for what's right. We can't we can't stop we, the, the devil was subtle. So we want to stop the man that's uh, sincere. He could be wrong as hell, but y'all want to shut him up before he even gets to express himself. And then the devil subtly whispering and bringing all this negativity into your environment, your mind. And you know when you go home, you think about what they said to you, because I do. I think about it. I said, you know what? If it wasn't for my good peaceful spirit, I wish I had said something. So we all have to work on ourselves. And if we can stop all of this, uh, uh, this, these things that Satan has put into 
our environment to counter our good efforts, then we can make progress. Uh, it's not that we're not on the right course and we're not doing the right things. It's that we are not making good efforts uh, to uh, see that our good works that we established have an opportunity to, to see, plant root, survive, grow healthy, nourish. You know, we gotta we gotta put a little more effort and uh, be a little bit more sincere, and we have to share it with our brothers and sisters. I listen to great imams and scholars that have the, like your brother said, have the language of the Quran, and can read the Quran to you and recite and rehearse to you all day long. A brother, I was walking with a, a, one of the soldiers in the, in, just in the, in the neighborhood, and he spoke to a brother that wasn't a Muslim that maybe didn't identify with Muslim, and he said something that was more powerful than probably. All the kutbahs I had heard that he had put together. Okay. He looked at the brother and told him, he said, Barack Obama, you see that president? That's you in the White House. And uh, it, that registered in that man, not just in his conscious mind, because it rang so true that I'm sure that registered on his soul, and he's going to carry that to the day he died. Right. And, it's, and he, he's never uh, the same. He will never be the same after hearing it. It's just simple things. It's just simple uh, truths that Allah gives us, and uh, we're all uh, victim of our own uh, lack of using this intellect. This gift, the Imam Muhammad said that the greatest gift, and I agree with him 1,000 percent. If you could think of what is the greatest gift Allah has given to mankind, the human intellect. Everything you see, you look around me, and nothing in this material reality. Uh, has not been touched by the human intellect. And you say, well, I look out into the stars and in the sky. The human intellect can't touch that galaxy or the Milky Way. Uh, how come it has it? We got telescopes. Otherwise, if we didn't have telescopes and we hadn't seen it, you wouldn't know nothing about it. The intellect has touched the farthest regions of this universe. And we got to respect it. We got to respect it. If Allah give you the intelligence to do something and you don't use it, you're going to suffer the consequences. That's the law that Allah clocked into your own nature. You're going to suffer, suffer the consequences of that. Uh, I wanted to have my wife come up here and talk about all the great things the mom's care is doing. But y'all know it. I ain't going to keep yelling and beating in your face and, and diminish the value of it by telling you if you want it, it's here. If you don't want it, it's still going to be here. No one that want it is going to benefit from it. We got a lot of good, a lot, of, a lot to offer, and a lot has truly blessed us with great things. And I'm going to keep making money. Graceline Magazine is out. We offer, uh, I think, a, what is it, 30%, 25%, 30%. Uh, if you want to sell it, uh, retail, uh, wholesale price. or And we also offer it retail. It's a beautiful, beautiful magazine. And a lot's hand is in the work when... The work we do for this mom's care, I, I can see the difference between the work. You know, I've been working, uh, I've been employed since I was in high school. I had a job in high school, most of the, uh, and every summer I worked. But when I started doing work exclusively for the mom's cares, and uh, I see Allah's hand and his help and his angel's help in almost everything that we do. And that Graceland Magazine, that's one of the great blessings. And also our business concept. Uh, somebody said, send CPC. You all put CPC down. You all put the uh, group value buy down. Right. It is down. Mm -hmm. It ain't never went nowhere. Right. We got your products. Right. That ain't went nowhere. Same concept. Mm -hmm. We got, uh, you just said it. Africa, the new Africa buying network. The new Africa buying network. It ain't going nowhere. <laughs> CPC ain't going nowhere. It's the same concept. Right. Uh, That's right. Progressive land or whatever. Yeah. Was that a collective yeah. thing? But yeah. the yeah. development. The, the blueprint the blueprint for us uh, to get where we need to go financially has been here right we need to we just have to quit down right. and have a little more faith right. and could quit counting every penny you put out there right when you go out there and like the brother said putting that poison in your body mm -hmm. eating yeah. McDonald's and Burger King and all of that I eat it too that's why I'm happy <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I acknowledge it too and I repent I've asked a lot of to help me and to show me better <laughs> at least I ain't eat no pork <laughs> well, I say, you know, if, if circumstances force me I can eat pork and I pray that I never get in that situation I hold my I think I just suffer I choked it that I never had it and I never wanted it I don't I ain't nothing attractive to me about that hog. Some people that eat it, they like the smell of it. 
Yeah. And it's, it makes me physically ill. This is not but to each his own. And, and that animal is creation of God. That animal is an angel. Did you know that the pig yeah. is an angel? Mm -hmm. Allah created it. Right. Allah created it, right. and it serves. It's, we're the only one, the animal that God created that uh, don't know how to act. Right. <laughs> you know, so uh, I have nothing against that animal. Like my father said, if I wasn't a Muslim, I probably wouldn't enjoy eating it. But uh, alhamdulillah, we we are well on our way to where we need to go. Mm -hmm. It's just the young people, the culture that we live in, the uh, environment that we live in, it's strong now. It's way stronger than it was oh, yeah. Yeah, when we yeah. called ourselves oppressed. Yeah. There's so many things pulling them left and right, and it's alluring. Yeah. But, uh, the Satan, yeah. is, he, he's boasting. He's yeah. dancing around, and he's happy. He think he got it. Because it do, if, if you look at it, it look like he is winning, but we right. know better. That's right. That's right. We, That's right. we know better than that. Right. He's, right. he, his time is short. Right. And uh, every time uh, one of one of us meet Allah, he, he, his time is up. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, so uh, the young people, the youth, in order to get them in this mindset, we have to look and find strategies uh, how can we compete with what's pulling your young people away? That's right. By staying steadfast mm -hmm. and continue to offer them and invite them. We right. invite them. There's no compulsion in Islam. That's right. We invite them. Right. We we set a platform. I would feel I would feel happy if we put on a convention for the young people and put on a platform, invited all of them, and if none of them showed up, mm -hmm. I, I didn't. I don't care if y'all do that. And I would put on that thing for the infantry because Allah knows our intent. And that will weigh on their hearts, that burden their conscience. Everybody has a conscience of mind. Even the biggest hypocrite know that. Uh, and when Allah call them back, if, if they don't have, they didn't have a conscience, then they gonna remember all of it. It's gonna all come back on them. So we do what we have to do, and Allah is the one that rewards and punishes. It ain't our job to punish people. That make a devil out of you when you think you can do that. I know a lot of wicked people that think that they they can. Uh, Administer our lives justice. That's not your place. That's not our place. So we, you know, I can go all day talking about our faults, you know, uh, and it should bring your spirits down because, like a brother said the other day, that uh, it made him stronger when Imam Muhammad would uh, show him his faults. Imam, and I, I'm, uh, I want to try to remember Imam uh, uh, Majid, Abdul Kareem Majid, in your prayers because he's a he's a good brother and he right. can really help us. And he's sincere, and he has put a double effort towards uh, trying to help uh, this community. And like many others, he's just one out of many other uh, good imams. And we have good leadership. So there's so much evil that uh, you have to work on yourself not to focus on the evil, but put the focus on yourself. Stop putting the focus on everybody else. Put the focus on yourself and don't glance aside. Like they put that blind on that horse and he, he win that race. <laughs> you know, that's what we got to do. You know, I'm going to lie. But I thank you all and I appreciate you all. And I really enjoyed Savior's Day. And uh, I think I'm beginning to feel a little bit of what my father had. But I don't know I don't know if we can make it that good. But we're going to keep working on it and try to make Savior's Day as good as the one that Imam Muhammad enjoyed when he was 10 years old. I want my son to tell me when he was 10, he enjoyed Savior's Day the way Imam Muhammad did. And, uh, we're, we're truly a blessed people. And uh, I thank you all. I can't thank you all enough. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Say thank me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the platform is standing on the shoulders of the pioneers. That's where we are. He's standing on the shoulders of the pioneers. He's standing on the shoulders of the pioneers. He's in a leadership position, so we follow him. we all leaders in some way. But we have to recognize that and respect that. Right. And once we start respecting each other and what we're doing, then we'll see the progress in moving. We can't aim in jealousy with each other. That's not our problem. Brothers and sisters, we should be way above that. Right. If we got the Quran and the life of the Prophet and the commentary of the Imam Wafi Muhammad, then we should be foremost at the Quran. Are we really following it? Are we really serious? Do we really want to be about that? Let's everybody pick up a magazine. Pick up a magazine. Yes. Thank you. Two. Three. Many others. Sister Robin? Do you supposed to come up?